Wagon engine, SMX is to the front, to the front of the wagon. We're gonna be putting this in today. Um, thought I would show you, because I get the comments every once in a while, oh man, you should give away an SMX engine, that would be cool. If you knew the cost involved in getting this kind of horsepower to the ground, it's astronomical, <laughs> astronomical. So I thought I would show you some of the costs involved of just getting this much power to the ground in a car. Just to start this thing, just to have the correct flex plate, this is a all billet steel flywheel flex plate, $850 flywheel. And it's just a flex plate actually, I keep on saying flywheel, but it's a flex plate. This is an all solid billet, the teeth are all machined into it. This starts out as one piece of steel, billet steel. And it's like a five, $600 starter. $850 for a flex plate. Then I'll come over here. You better not be going to these things, to these shows, without a spare transmission. You wanna know how much this is? That's like a $14,000 transmission. Um, I'm not saying all this stuff uh, for any other reason than, you guys probably just don't know, the costs involved of doing all this stuff at this level. Garrett's figuring out the costs involved because I think shaking the car, shaking mullet apart, it's, it's, abusive trying to continue to put more and more power to this stuff you saw what i did with the rear end i'll show you that in a second then what do you need to make this all work a all billet steel converter from neil chance this is not even a lockup converter i don't i have not gone to that expense of the lockup converter i'm not going to do that uh, this is a seven thousand dollar converter then you got the primary transmission or primary transmission in there. You saw the carbon fiber drive shaft that Gulf Coast uh, drive shafts did for me. That's super cool. I'll show you the underneath here again. Then you have there's that super cool drive shaft. That thing's awesome. It just barely fits in my <laughs> in all my hoops and everything. But it's cool because that is four and three eighths diameter, four and three eighths diameter hoop or uh, uh, carbon fiber drive shaft dog is on it right now Dewey's on it. Uh, so anyways then we got the Mark Williams 12 inch diameter rear end that is you need to go back and you can look at the mother of all rear ends it is spectacularly awesome that thing is 15 sixteen thousand dollars too so just in there that is just to get that power to the ground and that's not even saying you're not going to break all this stuff too. So that's just a little bit of illustration. So let's get to putting this engine in the car. We're going to have this thing running tonight, Lord willing, and uh, get ready to rock and roll. So as it turns out, I have to take this intake manifold off. When I sold Cletus my engine, I sold him my intake manifold. I didn't sell him the cover. So I bolt the whole cover on here, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, I gotta A, I gotta run all the wiring through it, which isn't the big deal. But I totally forgot, this is brand new. I don't have any ports in here for any of my map sensor, blow off valves. Uh, or fuel pressure regulator. So, back off it comes, <laughs> and that's what I'm doing right now.
All right, Clark. See, that's not the face of a guy that doesn't want to be on camera. <laughs> Anyways, he's gonna pull. We're, we're close, we're very close. And he's here and has to leave. So he's gonna pull the skin off of the windshield. Real? And now, don't touch it. Even though I got my, uh, well, I got my uh, deal yeah, over here. For now. Yeah. We'll move my uh, list over to, don't stick it on a window. That's right. <laughs> We'll move it somewhere else. We'll Stick right it on the... Yeah, that's fine. Oops, sir. Yeah, pull it off real slow. Ooh. Shiny. Shiny and clean. Got to touch the shiny. No, I'm, I can touch it. It's my car. <laughs> Don't touch it! You gotta Look build these little it's pieces so, off! It's so clear you can't even see it. Look at that. There's Kyle. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to hit it with some brake clean. <laughs> right off, there, yeah. Wipe off the oh, grease a There's bit. a little bit of oil right here. Get the brake <laughs> clean out. Alright. Back at it. So you just heard it run, and uh, so it just that was the initial startup. Uh, it started up on gasoline, then it swapped it over and started up on methanol. Excuse me, so it's still running on methanol right now. So we'll get this thing all sorted out. We had to verify timing because we changed our reference angle because I sent all that stuff to Cletus. So <clears throat> everything's just slightly different. So we did that, and now we're uh, going through. I uh, got it to start, got it to getting it to idle. So I'll just resort out a little bit of the tune stuff right there. So I'll do that later. But, all right, we're running. It is uh, Wednesday, 11.30 a.m. So we are going to be, uh, and you're gonna be seeing this tonight. So uh, I still gotta do this the rest of the way. So uh, for tomorrow's episode, we're going to do car setup. And how, and I'll explain all that for four link, instant center of the car, ride height, everything and pinning angle so we'll go over all that stuff i'll talk to you about that that'll be in tomorrow's episode which i gotta do tonight <laughs> and then uh alex taylor is on her way she's here tonight uh she's gonna be here at six o'clock or so and miraculously we're gonna rebuild and bore and hone the block in the car so she can be there tomorrow that's gonna be crazy so uh make sure you're watching there uh so that'll be on tomorrow's episode somehow some way uh, there'll be a bunch of stuff in there uh, and then we're going because uh, tomorrow we have to be there at 10 o'clock in the morning to go do some uh, film stuff and shoot so let's talk about the engine I'll show you some of this stuff of all the final pieces of 
how long and what is all entailed. I don't even have the radiator or any of the water in it yet, which isn't a, which isn't the real big deal. Um, so we still got to hook that up. But all the you've seen me hook up all the oil system, all the fuel system. You see the fuel pump here. You see the uh, how this is just a quick band disconnect, or so I can flip this latch right here and pull the fuel pump forward. I take this drive shaft out of there, put it back on. It's no longer spinning the whole race pump. So this is the methanol tank. This is the whole methanol system. This little line right here that goes all the way to the back of the car. This little line right there is the street drive. And that is back in the rear tank of the car. So a totally separate system. That's the bottom set of injectors. Then the upper injectors are just race only. So these are methanol. Down below are street drive. Um, you see we got uh, had to reroute and I redid a couple of oil lines. Tried to clean up some stuff that I wanted to take care of before. We have the engine vent line going back to our little chimney stack. You saw that. That's really neat. Uh, this is this the old tank here is just to drain or I'm sorry just to vent the dry sump tank so the dry sump tank is sucking fumes sucking oil sucking everything out of the engine needs to vent this vent line at the top of the engine is going back to our little chimney stack so technically we have technically it's it's always evacuating here so it's you know it's the same basically the same not exactly, but basically the same as having uh, two great big lines, 2-16 lines, going to vent. Um, you see the, everything right down to the alternator, the fuel pump, oil pump down on the bottom, oil filter over here, tank. Uh, we pre-filter all the oil, so all the oil that comes out of the engine gets filtered first, then sent to the tank, so the tank is always clean. Uh, when we put the oil coolers and everything back on here for this little for this part of the deal we're not going to bother putting an oil cooler in it I'm going to refigure out how to do a better oil cooler system for it and better trans cooler system for it so right now I took those two small radiator coolers out of the car we got the old big hearts one twin 110 millimeter turbos you got it like that twin one tens and let's see here Everything from EGTs, fuel filter, uh, struts, uh, bottom, got the engine pan on, and transmission. So we're filling up the transmission right now, getting that all topped off. Probably some of the reason why I'm having to change up some of it is we changed to a couple of electronic pieces. So <clears throat> to the uh, Peak and Hold Pro drivers instead of having four eight and two drivers now I have just two so I think it's changed just slightly in my tune-up that's why it's not right back to normal which is fine um, so anyways we're gonna continue to to top this off and just get ready for getting everything on it and then set it on the ground and do the uh, chassis setup and then probably rebuild Alex Taylor's engine and then go to Chicago tomorrow and sleep while I'm driving, whatever, who knows. All right, I'm Steve Morris. Come back tomorrow, you can see chassis set up. Like, subscribe, share. Gotta get something out of this whole social media deal.